Joshua chapter 1 from verse 2 to verse 5. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 2 to 5. And then turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 16 from verse 14 to 18. This will be lengthy read. Um, Joshua chapter 1 from verse 2 to 5. And Mark chapter 16 from verse 14 to 18. The Bible says in Joshua 1, 2, 5, the Bible says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Mark chapter 16, verse 14 to 18, the Bible says, Afterward he had appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Now, Father, Lord, speak to us. Give me utterance that I may relay to each and every one of us the message you have for each and every one of us to advance fearlessly and also, Lord, to do your will. Now receive all the glory, receive all the praise, for we pray all this trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. You may have your seats. Now, the two passages I've, I've just read um, have this in common, this one thing in common. All of them speak of a charge to advance. All of them speak of a charge to advance. And advancement in these two texts should be understood as a military campaign to move forward into territories and possess those territories. Amen? Amen? And so there is a charge being given in both texts. Joshua is being commissioned by God to arise and go and take lands. But in the New Testament, we find our Lord Jesus giving a charge to believers to go into all the world and acquire territories. Now, in the, in the Old Testament, most of the territories being acquired are physical territories. These are lands that are going to be taken. But in the New Testament, the territories are spiritual in the form of the hearts of men that are lost to sin and need to be saved. Amen? And likewise, we would want to take the same and ask ourselves, what are some of the things that we need to advance into? And more specifically, the spiritual things that we need to advance into, because you and I know the world we live in has two dimensions. We have the physical and the spiritual. And quite often than not, what you see already started in the spiritual. So if you conquer your spiritual, you will manifest it in the physical. Amen? Amen. And so as we... Read these two texts, and through this message, I will attempt to answer three key questions. 
even as we move forward. One is why advance? Why not just move into things? Why should we advance? And like I mentioned earlier on, advancing is not just movement. Uh, the, the English dictionary defines it as moving forward with purpose. Amen? With purpose, not just moving forward. Amen? But moving with purpose. And that is usually the case with military campaigns or moving a, as military. They advance strategically, but with a purpose. Amen? So we would want to ask ourselves, why advance? Amen? But number two, how should we advance? Amen? Because this is, has to be purposefully, has to be strategically. And lastly, what is the real conquest for our advancement as believers? You know, all of us are advancing this year. But what is the real conquest that God has intended as we advance? Amen? And that's why, in the, uh, as I started out, I, I mentioned that we need to put these two things in mind. One, let us obtain something and keep that thing even as we advance. Amen? And I will be mentioning it even as I come towards the end of my message. But also, advance with an attitude of holy anger. Amen? So I will try to move as quickly as possible, even as I draw parallels from these two texts. So my first question is, why advance? Why should we advance? One, I've just said that the, def the English def uh, definition of um, advancing is to move forward purposefully. Amen? So we should advance because there is purpose in advancing. And God is a God of purpose. God created each and every one of us for a purpose. In purpose and to fulfill purpose. Amen? And so that is one reason why you and I ought to advance. Because there is a purpose in advancing. If you look at Joshua, they were not just advancing. They were given territories to advance into. Jesus was not just here for three years and without any mission. He was also to advance into all the world. There was purpose. So that is one reason why we should advance. But secondly and most importantly, as you glean on these two texts that I've just read in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we advance because the territories we are advancing into are occupied territories. Amen? These are occupied territories. And that's why elsewhere in the book of John 17, it says, we are in this world, but not of this world. And so anywhere you're going to advance, remember, it's already occupied. And that's why you have to advance and not just move into those territories. Amen? In fact, we advance because they are occupied. And Jesus, in Luke chapter 19 and verse 13, the Bible says, And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Again, there is the word occupy. Elsewhere, other translation is do business until I come. Again, in both cases, whether you're doing business or you're taking occupation, it has to be purposeful. It has to be an advancement. Amen? In business, people draw up um, strategic plan or they draw up plans as to how to make profits. They just don't get into business for the sake of it. Amen? It has to be strategic. It has to be purposeful. But just like it was in Joshua's context, he had been charged to occupy territories that were already occupied by other nations. Amen? And as I also mentioned earlier on, even Jesus is advancing to occupy the hearts of men that are already occupied by sin. Amen? And he wants to occupy our hearts into all the world to occupy this territory called our hearts with his salvation, the gospel of salvation. Amen? 
So considering the foregoing, what I've just mentioned, advancing should be our, yeah, a different word that I want to introduce to us today, our M.O., our modus operandi. Amen? Like our mode of operation. Like if I look at Gio, I know his M.O. is simply gospel and gospel with excellence. That is what he does. That is how he operates in a normal way. So even as Christian and as believers, I would want us, our MO will always be advancing. Why? We are on occupied territory. This world is already occupied. Whatever you will ever get from God will be to occupy from something that has already gotten it. Amen? That's why quite often when you talk about anything around um, the gospel, it's always a rework, redeem, receive, amen, repent. That means somebody was already there in the first place, and now you are redeeming that which belonged to you. You are occupying a territory that had been occupied, amen. And let me just mention three key areas that we need to advance into spiritually as believers. These are three key areas. They are not exhaustive, but it's, these are very key in our lives. One territory that we must advance into and not just move into is the territory of our souls lost to worldly thinking. Our thinking. We have to advance into the worldly thinking that most of us have. Amen? Right about now, there are many issues around mental health. Sinukweli. People are having issues with the way their mind thinks about life. And people are giving up. But our minds were not designed to give up in life. Amen? Then something has invaded our minds. Right now, our minds are filled with thoughts that are not right. But some of us are looking at me with other thoughts in mind. Amen? And thank God you're here in church because this is where we take the territory of our thoughts. Turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. The Bible says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think of these things. My prayer is that we invade our thought life with these things. Amen? And not any other thought of anxiety, fear, any other emotions that draw other emotions. And I'll just let us know something. If you have negative emotions, they were following a thought. It's not the other way around. Amen? First you have a thought, then it attracts emotions. And then the emotions motivate what you do. Amen? So if you take possession of your thought life, you will have the right emotions. Emotions are simply, you know, emotions, that's E and motion. Energy for motion. Amen? That is simply what emotions are. What motivates you to do something is an emotion. But that emotion follows a thought. Amen? So if you think right, you will have the right emotions and you will act right. Amen? Amen. And that is a territory we need to take. And that's why elsewhere in the book of Romans, and this is a familiar scripture, the Bible says, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says what? Be transformed by the renewing of that territory called your what? Your mind. Amen? So that you can advance into the purpose of God. Amen? Amen. But the second territory that we need to take and, and we need to advance. And by the way, when, I'm, when I talk about your thought life, don't take it easy. In fact, I, I, I overheard um, our Reverend um, Alan quoting a scripture, which you usually find in the, the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10. Our, our, our 
Weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through the pulling down of what? Now, these strongholds, see if it was you end up to so much. These are patterns of thinking. You've gotten yourself into a pattern of thinking that is destroying you. That is what God changes, and then you receive deliverance. Amen? In fact, if you read that passage of scripture, it says, taking every thought into captivity and obedience to Jesus Christ. Every thought. Amen? And this is a battle. Because the world we live in has been training us from the time we were born how to think. And we have formed patterns of thinking. And so we are not today going just to decide, I'm going to think right. No, it's going to be a battle. We have to advance into our mindset. Amen? But second, the territory that we need to take um, under control or advance into is the territory of our bodies. Our bodies. This ought to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. But our bodies have been occupied by carnality. Amen? We think fleshly. Amen? My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. You know, we keep asking, you, we, we, we tend to say, my body. But when we do sin, you say one thing led to the other. So who was controlling your body at that time? Amen? Galatians chapter 5 and verse nine, 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. And as I read this list, I want us to exercise honesty. Ukiona yako imekuja useme, mungu, uyo ni mimi. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are this, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen? Many of us are wrestling with our bodies manifesting carnality. And the enemy has invaded the temple of God. Elsewhere in 1 Corinthians 6, Paul instructs uh, the Corinthians, who are very fleshy, by the way. This was a church. You know, majority of the epistles written by Paul were not written to Gentiles, were written to believers. These were churches. But they were manifesting a lot of carnality. Amen? And so in 1 Corinthians um, 6, Paul tells them that don't you know your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But he goes on and says something interesting. He says, both your spirit and your body belong to the Lord. Amen? And so today, I would want us to question ourselves. What? Who is occupying the body right now as we speak? Because we need to advance and ensure like what Paul, Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, he knew that to advance into this territory called our body, he will need to do this. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27, he says, No, I beat my body and make it slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. Amen? That is how we need to advance with our bodies. When we feel this carnality trying to manifest, instead of the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, faith, self-control, every other good virtue that we speak of, the nine manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit, it's a constant battle. But as I mentioned earlier on, this is a battle that Jesus already overcame. And as I will show you earlier on, Jesus does something very interesting, which Joshua also did. Amen? Jesus demonstrated for three years, he walks this life, and then thereafter, 
after conquering everything, he gives us the same charge to live like him. Now, Joshua also did the same. He walked for a number of years conquering lands. And thereafter from Joshua 13, 14, 16 onwards, you see him allotting lands to the Israelites and say, Mumeona, what I've been doing. Now move in the same faith and get your lands. Just like Jesus. You know, the Old Testament is the gospel concealed and in the New Testament it's revealed. What you see in the Old Testament are types and shadow of what is going to be revealed in the person of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. So Joshua is literally a parallel to Jesus. In fact, they share the same name depending on whether it's Greek or Hebrew. Joshua or Yeshua or Jesus. Those are the same names. They bear the same title, salvation. Amen? But the third thing that I want us to look at, and this is a, a, a very serious territory we need to possess, is the territory of our world. Given we are in this world and not of this world. Now, I would want us to read the, uh, the, the scripture, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. The territory, after you've conquered your mind, after you have advanced and put your body into self-control, there is another territory we need to conquer as Christians. And that is the only reason why some, always when we pray, we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, because it's not here. It's not in this world. Amen. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because his will has not been done on earth. Amen? That's why you pray. To allow his will to manifest on earth. Because of what? We are in a world. But when I talk of the world, in Johannian um, language or in the book of John, the language of the world has three connotations. The first connotation is what we understand, the world, what you see around, the earth, and the people that live in that. This is not what we need to possess. Amen? The second one is the connotation of a world system. How, what controls the world, how people think. Now, this is what we need to advance against. Amen? First John chapter 2 and verse 15, the Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. There's a system in place that is coming against us as Christians as we move. I can speak of corruption, for example. You would want to do things, but there is a corrupt culture around you of how to get things. Amen? And we have to wrestle against that system. There is the system of liberal views. You know, anything goes so long as it's convenient for us. Like the spirit behind the LGBT movement, that is of the world, you know? This is how I feel today. Leo I'm in touch with my feminine side. Come on. That is what Romans 12, 2 says. Do not conform to the standards of this world. But do not confuse. God loves the world. In fact, John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. But he's not talking about the worldly system. Amen? I hope to me, to me part up. There is another force that is motivated by the evil one that we must come against. I've just mentioned those so that we know what to advance against. Your thinking your body, and the world system. But knowing what to advance against is one thing. 
but how to advance is another thing. And that's where I move to my next question. How to advance for conquest. Because Joshua did not just advance. He went with a way given by God. Jesus did not just ask believers to move. He gave them a strategy. In fact, at one time he told them, wait until you're endowed by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And then start in Jerusalem. He gave them a strategy of how to move. So even as God commands us to move into our territories of the mind, the territories of our body, and the territories of this world, we have to move with strategy, with his ways. And I want to share four ways of advancing. Amen? Four ways of advancing into the territories God has given us. Amen? And if you can conquer your mind, believe you me, wealth will come. Amen? All these other things we are chasing will come. Some things are missing in our mindset. And that's why we are where we are. We've been locked up just because of how. The, elsewhere in Proverbs it says, was, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen? So, don't be there um, being told the lie by the enemy. Why am I not advancing in business? Why isn't Dan talking about me getting a job, me getting married, me? All those things are functions of our mind, our body, and the world system that we need to take care of. Amen? So this is how we advance. Number one, and this is so important, and they will go in order. Number one, be charged by an authority to advance. Never advance on your own authority. Let there be an authority that tells you to advance. Because if you advance in your own, it's that uh, Swahili word, kitakuramba. Amen? Be charged by an authority to advance. So wait on God to tell you where to advance and how to advance. Amen? And that happens in the military. Soldiers just don't move. They wait for their general to give them a charge. And by there, I've just remembered, I didn't give you a title of my message. The title of my message is simple. The charge in and for faith. The charge in and for faith. Amen? So all of us have to get a charge, have to be commissioned, have to be sent in order to advance. But that has to be done in something. Amen? And for something. Amen? You remember something I told you in, uh, as I started out? I said, if you forget everything, this message was about two things. One is to help you obtain something and keep it. Because you will need it to advance. Amen? But secondly, I wanted to stir up holy anger. So that as you move, when you have this thing, you move with holy anger. Amen? Because your territories are occupied. Amen? And we will have to advance with that attitude. So the first one is be charged by an authority. Amen? In Joshua's case, God orders him. In Jesus' case, again, it is Jesus, the Lord. You know, he's either Lord of all or not at all. In this, in this church, we are, we are thankful to our geo. Whatever he, he has designed around here speaks volumes. Here at the pulpit, we have this superscription here. You know, every, every, every time you come into this church, you need to ask yourself, is Jesus Lord? Is Jesus Lord in your life? Because he's either Lord of all or not at all. Amen? And that's why you will see for Joshua in, in the text we've just read, he will talk about observing all things, you know? Even in, uh, in Jesus sending, commissioning, he will use the word all. Amen? Most of the time. Not some. You know, some, somewhere, most of the time, here Jesus is Lord in church. So I, as we are seated here, he is Lord. No question. Nobody will stand here and object anything. 
But when you walk out, church. Let me go back to the world. Amen. apply hapa. So my prayer today is that as you advance, be charged by the authority. Amen. Amen. By the authority. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18, the Bible says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. You know what he was saying? He was saying, Now I have the authority to become an authority in your lives so that I can charge you to advance. Amen? As you advance, ask yourself, Who is Lord commanding you to advance? Amen? And it can come also in a form of a vision given by God. Let that vision become Lord over your life. It can come in form of a calling over your life. Let that calling conquer you in order for you to conquer. Amen? And that has always happened, even in the world system. People who are good in anything were first mastered by something. Whether it was they trained in something, whether they practiced that skill, they were servants to a craft until they became masters and they advanced to show their prowess in that area. Amen? Similarly, even in our faith, we need a Lord over us. The only Lord over us who we submit to in order for us to advance. Akisema niende, we need to move. Amen? Do not advance in your own terms. A good passage of scripture that I would want us to concentrate on that is beautiful, um, an illustration, is found in the book of Matthew chapter 14 and verse 28. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 28. Because of time, I'll just give you the background of this. This is where, you remember where Jesus asks Peter to walk on water. Munakumbuka that? That time. First, these guys are in a boat and there's a storm and it's shaking. And they see something like a phantom walking on water. And Peter, being Peter, was like, is that Jesus? If you are Jesus, I bid you to call me to walk. In other words, I'll say, be an authority and make me advance on these waters. Amen? That is what Peter was saying, you know? You know, many times Jesus will show up in our situations. Amen? And sometimes you're like, I, apa. we need to have the same attitude as Peter. If you are Jesus, bid me to walk on where others sink. And so Peter was given a charge by his authority, which was Jesus. Walk on this water. And he started walking. You remember? The same way should be ours. Amen? But I also mentioned another thing that gives us charge is vision. God can give you a vision that never leaves you. And everything else in the physical is doubtful. But there's this vision, this dream that God keeps speaking to you. You will become this. You will overcome this. That should give you the charge. That should give you an authority. And for example, in Joshua 6, 2, you will see these things. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 2, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. The key word there is see. He first paints a picture of the victory. And he says, advance even according to what you see, which is a vision. And many of us, God is speaking to us even right now so that we can be able to see that God has sent us to take the territories, whatever those territories are in our respect. Amen? But number two, after you have received a charge from an authority, discharge in obedience. Amen? By doing right. Not just good. Doing right. Amen? You know, many of us will receive a call We'll be told how to advance, but we will advance in a way that is compromising or not of integrity. Amen? God wants, is a righteous God, and 
word that you need to take at the back of your mind is the word right, not good. Obey rightfully, because he's a righteous God. I'm reminded of a text in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 24. The background here is Moses. It's a very interesting passage of scripture. Moses is being sent to go deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. You remember that story? And as he advances, the Bible says um, in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 24, and it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Why would God kill the person he's sending? What is so wrong there? Because Moses was advancing, yes, but not rightfully. He's advancing as a Jew to go speak to the Jews, and yet he has not circumcised his kids. That is not right. Amen? You, the advance, the call, is okay. But how you're doing it is not right. And the Bible says, and God sought to kill him. These are areas God doesn't mess with. He, ha he might have told you to advance in an area, but if you're doing it in your own way, kita kuramba. In fact, ye yende atakikisha kime kuramba. Amen? We need to be very serious as we advance. We have to be, you can imagine, that's why it takes time to train soldiers. So that they do right in discharging an order given to them. Because it can cost lives. Many of us are going through situations just because we are not advancing in the right way. And it's usually the straight and narrow, and it's a tough road. In fact, Jesus never minces his words. He says, wide is the gate that leads to what wing you want to travel in that, but there's that straight and narrow which is difficult. Our advancing must necessarily be difficult, but it's the right way. Amen? Some of us are advancing even in prayer, but not rightfully. Amen? The reason why some of us, our prayers are not being answered is because we are not praying rightfully. You know, elsewhere in the Bible it says, you pray, but you pray a miss. Amen? Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 23. The Bible says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother had ought against thee, leave there the gift before the altar, and go thy way first before reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Amen? Many of us have come to seek God today. But are we doing it right? Maybe you may cosair your, your spouse, your friend, your neighbor, and here you are, umeinua mikono. You are advancing in worship, you are advancing in prayer, but you're not doing right. My prayer is that as we advance, let's advance rightfully. Amen? In obedience and rightfully. That's why Jesus, I mean, God will insist on Joshua saying in Joshua 1.8, This book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And he was to learn this when you read Joshua 7. You know, they, they advance in a very city, a, a small city called Ai. But they advanced not in a right way. And they lost that battle. And Joshua was, 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 was mad at God. Why are you sending us to fail? And he said, there's something that is not right in your camp. You remember that story? So even right now, don't be quick to tell God, why are things not working? And yet you have given me all these things because of my salvation. Maybe there's something in your life that is not right. Or you are advancing, but not in the right way. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8 shows us of a model of Jesus Christ. He advanced by this scripture. It tells us he obeyed unto death. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, And being found in the fashion as of man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, 
even the death of the cross, whereof God hath God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. This followed what? An obedient servant who did right. Not just good, because miracles were good, but he did right by going to the cross, by sinning not. Amen? And my prayer is that even as we advance as GCI into the territories God has already given us, let us advance rightfully. Amen? Number three, discharge courageously. Amen? And, and he kept repeating this to Joshua. Remember to be courageous. But what is courage to us? Courage is simply confidence in what you know. Amen? If you ever see, it's not summoning yourself, what we will say as young people, kujichocha. No, this, this world here, Kujichocha, the territories we are taking, we must know who has sent us. Know, not feel, know. Amen? Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 B, it says, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Amen? Courage is simply confidence in what you know. This is what God was telling Joshua. Do you know me? Then advance. Amen? Many of us, things are becoming tough as we advance because we have not taken time to know the God who has called us to advance. The day you will know who God is, that he's a God of impossibilities, who does him the impossible, then you will advance with courage. But lastly... And this leads me to my conclusion. Discharge fully or faith fully. Amen? Finish the charge you are given. Usifike nusu. When God has called you to go conquer territories, musifike, you know, the, the, the Israelites or even the time of Joshua, they did not even get... Um, all the territories that were given to them. You know, even the church, the great commission is what? Go into all, all the world. Amen? There are territories, once God has charged you, please discharge fully and faithfully. God is not a God who begins something and never finishes. Amen? It might be tough, and many of us have quit on what God called us to advance. And that is a lie of the enemy. Nothing God, in fact, Miles Munro puts it this way, um, the late Dick, Dr. Miles Munro. He says, when God asks you to begin something, it's proof that it has already been finished by God. That is who God, and you know he was quoting which passage of scripture? Philippians chapter one and verse six. Being confident of this very thing, you remember confidence and courage? That he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen? Do you have a vision? God had already seen you finish. But the world, the enemy is occupied by a liar. He will come to you and say, Wewe kwisha, you cannot. And if you believe in that lie, you will quit. Let us not quit on our families. Because God began something beautiful when he started with your marriage. Amen? Don't quit on any household, member of that household, even if it's your son or your daughter who's walking away. Let them walk for some time. You know, they can become like the prodigal son. You know, the Bible says, and they came back to, he, he came back to his. So what you are seeing is temporal madness for some time. Mpatia two time, atarudi. But the father of the prodigal son never went anywhere. Mnakumbuka? You remain in God. Amen? No matter what it is. If it is your spouse, if it is whoever, remember, kuna time to your season, ya watu ukua mad for some time. Okay? But mpende. We will be mad for some time with your children. Usimtupe inje. The Bible says, and the prodigal son came back to his... 
Yeah, na kirudi atapata the father with God. Amen. So that we continue to discharge fully. Guys, do not quit on what God has asked you to advance in. Amen. But lastly, as I finish, the last question was, what is the real conquest for our advancement? And it's tied on the last thing that I've just mentioned. As we discharge, we should discharge faithfully. Now, the word faithful there is a very interesting word. There is faith and there is fully. Amen? Everything you are going through as you advance, the object of your advancement is that God gives you faith. Amen? And he wants to fill your faith to full. Did you catch me? So today you advance in something, you start believing. Hiya, this thing can work. So your faith starts growing until it becomes full. That's why at the end of it all, Jesus said what? Well done. Good and what? Faithful. Like you are full of faith. Now enter into your rest and receive the reward. The object of our advancement is not so much to do with what we conquer, but what we obtain while we are conquering. Amen? Because once you obtain faith, you can conquer any other thing on earth. We will conquer one land, Jericho. But there is AI. There are other territories. And all of them need faith. And that's why I started what I want to conclude with is learn to obtain the most important resource on, with, as far as your Christian faith is concerned. And that is faith. Amen? Amen. Jesus puts it this way. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 to 8, there's a story of a persistent widow who kept knocking, knocking, and nagging, and nagging. But I want to draw you to the last verse. Because this was a nagging widow who went to someone who even doesn't know her or respect her faith. But because of her persistence, her faith became full until she received what she wanted. And this is what Jesus ends in Luke chapter 18 and verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? But verse 8 is the most important. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Amen? We are going through this world that I mentioned. Your mind, your body, and the world system are in opposition to our advancement. Amen? And I've just mentioned to us how we ought to advance. But in everything... Let us advance in faith. Amen? Amen? And do something that Paul says, and we usually quote this in many of our memorial services when we are about to pay our last respect. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 to verse 8. The Bible says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day, and not to me only, but to, unto all them also that love his appearing. Brothers and sisters, as I conclude, remember, God has asked all of us to advance in areas that I've just mentioned. He wants us to advance and advance faithfully, completing that charge. Whatever God has asked you to move into, 
move courageously with obedience, rightfully, but finish that course. But in the end, let faith be found with you. Because this is the thing that will take you to the next level. Even when you get born again right now, it's a stage. Salvation, then there is where you get purified, and then finally glorification. It will take faith to be caught up in the air. Can you imagine? You know, you can be believing for, for a spouse. You can be believing for a job. But nothing can be compared with having faith to be caught up in the air with God. Those are not easy feats to accomplish. It will take faith. But not the kind of faith that doesn't grow to the full. That's why you need to be faithful. Amen? And obtain that commendation from the Lord Jesus. Well done, good, and what? Faithful, because your faith has been made. So be encouraged, even as you have started this journey of advancing into the territories that God has given us. Be encouraged. Every step, every conquest you're experiencing is building your faith. And as your faith grows, you will conquer other big things, other territories, even for God's glory. Amen? Amen. Let's rise to our feet, even as we finish. I want us just to go before God and make a simple prayer. Prayer for God to give us a charge to move into the areas we ought to move. I've just mentioned we not need to move in areas without a charge. Let God give you a charge. Let God help you to take up a charge in faith and for faith. Amen? So ask God, God, give me a charge today. Maybe it's a charge to be born again. Call me, God, I can hear you speaking to me. Give me that charge to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. It can be a charge for me not to quit on that child who's acting up. Or that situation that is weighing on you right now. God, give me a charge. And lastly, I would want ask to ask him for the gift of faith. You know, faith is interesting in the Bible. It's at once a fruit, a manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit, but also a gift. It's something that we can be gifted by God. The Bible says faith comes to us by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. The word of God is like a gift to us. When you believe in it, you receive faith. And faith is the most important thing even as you advance. Amen? Let's talk to God even for a few minutes before I hand it over. Father God, we are thankful for your message. We are thankful for the charge to advance. Father, we ask that you give us a charge, a fresh charge to move into the territories that we must possess. Father Lord, we pray for the gift of faith to be found in us even as we advance in faith and for faith. May we be found faithful by you at the end of every conquest the Lord you will lead us into. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord for his word.